Hi, my name is Dave Pullen. I'd like to welcome you to Portland Film Beat. My guest tonight is Matt Schulte. He's a filmmaker, a musician, and the founder and CEO of Lower Boom, a Portland-based micro-budget film studio, talent incubator, and film discovery at platform developer. Yes. Matt, hey. how are you doing, man? Thank I'm you great. for coming over here. Uh, so, uh, thanks for inviting me on. Why the name Lower Boom? Um, well, a lot of reasons. One, I, th I wanted something short and catchy. I wanted something that wasn't um, too specific because Lower Boom does a lot of different kinds of things. So <laughs> I didn't want it to be Matt Schulte Productions. You know, okay. I wanted it to be a little, you know, a bigger umbrella. Um, and then I also liked, you know, it has some filmmaking connotations, you know, yeah. the boom mic, right, etc. And we're a micro-budget film studio, so we're trying to create a little bit of a boom down there in the lower budget world. Okay, good, good. Uh, tell us about the screenplay that, you know, was a finalist in the Blue Cat Contest. Uh, it's, a, it's a script called After the Riots, a feature script. Um, and it's about uh, a family. Um, basically, Civil War comes to the suburbs. Oh, and really? It's a story about um, uh, a husband and wife and their two kids. They're kind of a hipster little family, but this war breaks out, and it turns into this, the father basically has to go from being a hipster to protecting his family in actual wartime. Where did you come up with the premise of that? Uh, I don't know, actually. <laughs> Is that right? Oh, okay. yeah. I, re I just really thought it'd be interesting to have somebody, you know, that you wouldn't normally, you know, see in a situation like that, like having to fight to the death for their family and put them in a situation. So like it's that. actually a modern day, but yeah, Civil yes. War kind of modern kinda. day. Well, I mean, by that I mean, like, uh, in the United States, in the premise of the story, the society had kind of broken down and people were fighting each other. So it wasn't like an alien invasion. Okay. It wasn't like Russia <laughs> invaded. It was sort of neighbor against neighbor. Oh, wow, That's, yeah. that is interesting. Yeah. So you produced and directed four films in 2015 alone. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us about them, you know, especially I want to know about Frightening Nature and Joan, and we're going to watch a little clip from Joan here in a little bit. Tell us the premise, characters, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, not at all. Uh, Frightening Nature is kind of a David Lynchian story. Um, it's a very experimental uh, film about a woman who sort of wakes up in a dream, um, in a forest, and the story is about her kind of fighting the fears in her subconscious mm -hmm. to try to escape from this forest. So, so did Frightening Nature and Joan are short films? Yes. Okay, but um, the other, the After the Riots? After the Riots, that's a feature. Is it? Okay. Uh -huh. And um, Joan is basically taking the story of Joan of Arc um, and taking the classic Carl Dreyer Joan of Arc film, which is a classic 1927 silent film, and we updated it. So in, in that film, Joan is um, you know, uh, in court and being tried on charges of acting like a man, basically, right? Oh, really? Leading an okay. army, right? right. Um, but we've transposed that story into present time, and she's being held uh, in a clinic. Okay. Um, and the, instead of judges, like in the original Joan of Arc, there's these counselors. So it's kind of an updating <laughs> of that, but it's in black and white, and it's silent. Okay, um, but it like does have movie. music. Actually, you have a somebody pretty who does a lot of composing. Pretty popular person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Mark Orton, who's uh, a very pretty well-known composer uh, and musician. I think his most famous production probably is Nebraska, which is the Alexander Payne movie. He was nominated. For, yeah, yeah. I think uh, maybe six Academy Awards. Yeah. Um, Alexander Payne directed that. Uh, and Mark Orton is doing the score. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, we're going to actually do a. We're going to record. Uh, a string quartet. So when it comes to Frightening Nature and Joan and some yeah. of these, where do you get some of your film ideas? Well, uh, Joan was, that idea came out of um, me wanting to update um, that story of Joan of Arc and just thinking about what would that look like if, it hap if that kind of a thing happened nowadays. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, I think in terms of like my ideas for movies, I think they come from lots of different places. You know, I've, I've written quite a few screenplays, both short and features. And I think for this really, year? Yeah, yeah, it's for this year. Um, and I'm, we're shooting another one next month. So Is that um, right? Yeah, a movie called Dialed that's set in the um, salt flats in uh, Utah. Are you going to the salt flats? Yep. Really? Mm -hmm. Good for you. Yeah. You know, so you're also a musician. Yeah. You've toured a lot, mm -hmm. and you've released an album. Uh, it's a live album. It's called Boxer Rebellion. You know, where was it recorded? 
Um, that was recorded um, in a uh, bar in Boise, Idaho, called so the Neuro. You get around a lot then. I get around. <laughs> and so there was, I, I, I'm interrupting you. Sorry, you can finish. That's right. But um, that's right. Who was with you when you did that? Uh, the album? Yeah. So it was a band, and I, I was one of the lead singers, and there's another lead singer. His name is Bill Coffey, a good friend of mine. Um, he are and they I, all from Portland? No, none of them are from Portland, actually. Okay, so um, you went out to Boise where they are. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. Um, and we toured around a lot, um, and my friend Bill, who's the other singer in that band, lives in Boise. He and I have played together as both as a duo and in larger bands like this Boxer Rebellion project. Right. So we, I flew out there, we did two nights at this uh, bar, Neuralux, and recorded both nights <laughs> and then turned it into a, a live album. Well, good for you. Which you can get on iTunes. Good. <laughs> Let's talk about that <laughs> a little bit. Right, right um, so uh, how many actually films have you shot then, do you think? Um, hmm. Over uh, your t lifetime? Or Filmmaking. Well, I've worked on a lot. I mean, in addition to shooting, I've worked on a lot of um, bigger feature films. So I would, but I wouldn't count those. I suppose I've probably shot maybe eight. Oh, is maybe? that right? Yeah. Did you write all eight yourself? Yes. The, well, the only movie that I that I've helped produce um, is a movie called that I didn't write. It was a movie called CPR that came out about three years ago that um, played a lot of festivals around the world. Yeah. How long have you been uh, making films then? Um, probably, I'm going to say maybe six, 16 years, maybe. Is that right? Yeah. Did you get professional training or just this is something I want to do? Um, I, uh, just like as a musician, I've had no training in either. <laughs> yeah, but some of the better filmmakers, I think, are ones who just get in there and, and start plugging away. I think that, you know, like with filmmaking, uh, I actually worked on uh, films in production just because I could. <laughs> I had friends in the film business yeah, and I started working absolutely. on it. But, um, so you've done behind the scenes, you've done all everything. Totally. Now. And it wasn't, you know, I've been the PA on lots of films, you know, so uh -huh. it wasn't like I went to film school. But the same with music. You did go I to just, film school. I went to the real film school. The real film which school. Which is right. like, you know. So you actually score some of the productions on your own film. And um, there's actually a feature film. Why don't you tell us about that? There's a feature film. Yeah. Going to be playing at the Living Room Theaters? Yeah, Living Tell Room Theaters. Tell us about theaters. that film right uh, now. It's called Big Significant Things, and it's showing August 21st at uh, Living Room Theaters here in Portland. Um, really excited about it. All right. And um, when did you start writing? Start writing uh, films? Yeah. Um, did it come out of uh, out of your it, mu music? Well, so I was, a, I was a writer, obviously, because I wrote, you know, I wrote my music, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a musician. And I was working on a film with uh, a good friend of mine, a pretty big feature, and he had an idea for a film uh, that he wanted to get produced. And he sent me the script that he wrote. And he's he was a good friend of mine, and he's like, "Really, tell me what, tell me what you think." And I read it, and I said, "It's terrible." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "And Is he's he still like, your well, friend? Uh, yeah, he's still <laughs> my friend, right? He knew he could try, you know." Okay, you know, well, so you were honest. I, I, honest I you know him. what I think that's a good thing is to be honest with writers about what I, they've got. You know, and because the guy's a brilliant producer, he's actually a very well-known producer. But um, now. Um, but he wasn't a writer, but he wanted to get the idea out. And I said, what if he thought about it so like So the premise this? was good, but... Decent premise. Okay. Just kind of, you know, people, especially, you know, rookie screenwriters, as you know, like dialogue can really... That can Heavy be tough, dialogue. You know, structure can be tough. I read a thing about a week ago that had two paragraphs of dialogue, and the other person <laughs> had two paragraphs. It's like... You could say the same thing yes, in please. three sentences. Exactly. But, um, you know, that's... Yeah, there's... but that's how you learn, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, um, I, I said, what about this? And I kind of wrote some stuff back to him, and he said, oh, that's pretty good, keep going. And that ended up being a script that we actually um, chopped around a little bit and got some good meetings. So d is that what first got you interested in film? In the, ri in the writing, a part of it, yeah. Okay. I was already working in films at that time. You've been doing this long enough, then. You were shooting films before the, the digital age really took took hold. Yeah. Well, so did and, you, yeah, and so... So were you involved when they were using celluloid? Oh, or, sure. Uh, do you still use celluloid or you use them mostly digital? I use mostly digital, although I really, like, I ju one of the films that's on this list here that I've shot this year, I shot in Super 8. Oh, is that right? Yeah, because I just, you, I you thought You can still it was get really, Super 8? Can, yeah, um, in fact, let me give a plug to the Northwest Film Center. If you want to shoot in Super 8, they've got the cameras. They will send the film out to get developed for you, and they'll put it, you know, they'll give you a digital version of it. 
Um, and I so just you've gotten shot. help from the Northwest Film Center. Absolutely, yeah. They're, that's they're a great. resource for every filmmaker in the Northwest. Um, wow. Okay. Very supportive of them. Okay. Do you prefer filmmaking or music? Making music. That's um, a difficult just, question. It, it is, you know, and it's um, they're so in a lot of ways they're so different. Like playing live as a musician, there's really nothing t that tops that for me. When you've got an audience there and you're in the middle of a song and it can be really transcendent. Filmmaking's a little more like, okay, let's move that over there. Now let's do that. And like when you get into the edit, that's when I feel like you kind of get the magic going. But the actual filmmaking itself is a little more about the logistics. Right. So you sometimes. also edit then? I do. Yeah, I do. Actually, I've edited all my films. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that takes a lot of time. You don't, do you do the um, sound design? I did the sound design, um, for instance, on Frightening Nature, I did the sound design, um, which I, I like, but I actually, just as of today, we're going to do a new mix with a, a different uh, guy's going to help me mix it, Evan Gandy. Hey, Evan. Okay, right. Um, when did you start your own uh, video production company? Well, um, I've always produced videos, really, and I don't really think of Lower Boom as like a video production company, like I don't necessarily uh -huh. take on clients if you know what I mean. Okay. It's more about like filmmakers and filmmaking projects. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing film production and video production, you know, for clients for, you know, that same 15 years probably. Let's know. watch a little bit of your work right now. We're going to take a few minutes to watch. Um, we're going to watch Joan and we'll be right back. Awesome. Wow, I love that. It, the, the images are really clear and crisp. Yeah. Did you shoot that in front of a green screen? No, we actually... Because the background was yeah, so, we actually, so very plain or something. I don't know. Yeah, we, we set up uh, basically a studio, so it's not a green screen, but it is a white screen. I mean, okay. and you'll see, you probably saw in some of those clips, um, images behind the actress. Sure, and yeah. And that was actually, we were projecting images from a projector behind her. Okay. So like we they did used a to lot do in the old school type Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. It's very old school. That's okay. <laughs> That's great. No. And, and so, Looks cool. who is the actress? Her name is Kira Distler. Um, and she was great. You did that right here in Portland then? We sure did, yeah. And I, I want to mention the other actors. That no, I, right, I saw John Branch John and talked Branch. about the angels. Who yeah. are your angels? Um, well, there's, is John Branch one of the angels? No, he's one of the counselors. I was going to say, because John Branch usually doesn't play. That he, would be his first angel character yes, I've seen. He, <laughs> he was the opposite of the angel. Okay, <laughs> I, I understand. Um, but um, we also had J.J. Johnston and David, Mar uh, David Frank, okay. um, who were the other counselors. And then Casey Marks um, played the angel. Okay. Yeah. And, and Joan, how long is it going to be when it's done? It's about nine minutes right now. Is that right? Nine and a half, maybe. Yeah, and so what kind of camera did you use on that? We used um, a couple of different cameras. I think the GH4, I think, is what we used for the most part. Okay. And also used one of the Sony AS7, I think they're called. Okay. Sony makes some great cameras. Yes. The cameras that come out nowadays, the digital ones, are just amazing. Phenomenal. I yep. mean, people, you can spend a lot of money, but actually the images that come out of the black money, the GH4, is that a Sony too? No, that's a, um, I want to say Panasonic. Maybe? Panasonic GH4, but then the Sonys, they really, really come up with some great stuff. Yeah, um, agreed. Did, did you do the cinematography or did you have somebody else no, do No, no, no. So, um, Go ahead. Uh, now, tell us who the cinematographer yeah, was. Yeah, so Boone Speed and Mike Ferry um, shot um, Joan for me. Okay. So we had, I kind of had two DPs and they both, they were both running cameras simultaneously. We had them set up in different places shooting different things. Okay, um, so you did the two camera shoot on this. We sure did, yep. Mm -hmm. And and how do you work with the cinematography? Do you work with the actors and then tell the cinematographers, here's what I want lit, go to work, and then kind of tweak it when you're done? Well, I think that I'm um, I'm not as technically um, competent <laughs> or proficient. That's me too, man. You know, as a lot. I mean, I think I have a general, um, you know, working with Mike and Boone, I'm <laughs> able to say, you know, in that film, 
where the light's kind of like the, you know, and maybe we should be shooting here. You know, I really rely on, I love you my crew. You should rely you know, on them, right. And they're the experts, right? So I had a very definite idea of what I wanted to see, and we did some camera tests, we did some lighting tests, and so we could kind of go into the shoot knowing, here's the kind of thing we want to go for. And then, of course, in the heat of the battle, you change things around. Uh -huh. um, so, but I really rely on them and for so that. How do you work with the actors, the actors then, and the actresses, especially because this yeah. is a silent film, correct? Yes, it is. Yes. And so it's got to be a lot of it's got to be what it really should be anyway is how their behavior and emotions. Sure. Stuff. So how did you draw that out of her? Because this is well, not a very fun situation for her, I take it. It is not, and nor and, and the the counselors themselves are super intense. We didn't see a lot of them in that clip, but I mean they had <laughs> a lot of screen time, and it's pretty intense. Um, I like to let actors. Um, kind of experiment, Good. you know. Um, I I always have notes in specific direction if that's going to be helpful, mm -hmm. you know. But a lot of times, you know, just like with the lighting of the in the crew lighting things, the best ideas come from just letting people just mm -hmm. kind of do their thing, mm -hmm. you know. So for instance, John Branch in this shoot, quite a few times he said, "How about if I try it like this? Why don't we try it like that?" And I'm so I'm completely open to that because right. you know films. A, it's got to be a collaboration, or you're right. just going to end up with a movie that, like, you know, it, is it, not nearly as compelling. Sometimes the actors know a little bit better than, than a director, I think. Absolutely, and you, and and you got a lot of things. Here's the way I look at it: shoot it the way the director wants, shoot it the way the actor wants, and then let the editor piece together the best story. I think that's really true, and I think you know, that's the, an it's an old cliche, but you know, the movie gets made three times when it's, it's in the it's script. It's written, yeah, exactly. it's shot, and so actually it's the edit that The edit's the, the one that, that, that does counts. it. I, mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. And you know, so I'm always trying to, I'm trying to let them do their thing. Right. You know? So getting back to the cinematography, yeah. did you come up with a shot list for Joan or because I of, did. right? Yeah. You do? Good for you. Yeah, so um, I had a very specific shot list because one of the things I was trying to do with that film and also one of my previous films, Letter B, I was trying very much to mimic the some of the camera setups and camera moves that were mm. in the original Joan of Arc, but I oh, wanted really? to up, yeah. So yeah, so you know you can't do it exactly, and of course that was four three, and we shot this in sixteen nine. So there's some technical differences, but I really wanted to get what they had in that Joan of Arc film, which was it was very disorienting. The shots were really unusual, and I wanted to replicate that, but then kind of do it in our own way. So I came in with a. Uh, a shot list and, uh, and storyboards and so, whatnot. So getting back to the uh, other films, what was the other one? Frightening Nature. Yeah, and I mentioned Letter B, which was also right. one of the earlier Do ones Do you too. actually hire or have a uh, sound person come on? Oh, sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Good now, for you, because sound is extremely important. I think, well, I th yeah, and, and as filmmakers, you know, you know that like sound is, can be overlooked and it's so critical. Right, a bad um, sounding movie you, you just can't watch. Yeah, so we, you know, Letter B, we had, um, you know, a great sound guy, Evan Gandy. Um, on uh, Joan, of course, it was a silent film, yeah. so we didn't have to worry about that as much. Right, right. So, what do you think your strengths are as a filmmaker? Um, I think I'm. I think I'm good at listening to. You know, I, I very much. You gotta listen. <laughs> I know it's, it's better than not. Right. Um, like with the cinematographers, you know, I want to hear what their ideas are. I want us to all kind of figure out the best way to do things. And just mm -hmm. like with the actors, I, I really like working with actors, okay. and I really like to trust them. At the same time, I can get tweaky like any director. <laughs> yeah, you, you have know? to though, because yeah. you, you know this is your sto a story. Sure. It's about the story, and you know what your vision is. Right, exactly. I mean, sometimes that vision changes. Sometimes the vision changes. Sometimes it's hard to, you know, you've got an idea, sort of, mm -hmm. you know, and then you get in the scene and you're like, oh, yeah, this, here's where we need to go. So since you know? you've been in Portland for a long time, you know yeah. a lot of the actors. Did sure. you actually audition for these, for your short films, or do you actually kind of have an idea already who, you're, who you want? Um, I, I actually audition every film that I've done, I've auditioned folks for so Good. I kind of like that like for instance um, I'd happened to work with John Branch before but I'd never met JJ Johnston before he did a great job mm -hmm. I knew Kira but I'd never actually worked with her mm -hmm. so um, yeah I like to audition folks all the actors that were in my movie letter B that showed earlier this year I'd never even met any of them okay. so yeah so what's your what do you think is your major weakness then um, as a filmmaker as a f well sometimes I can get um, I can get lost in the um, 
the technical stuff. Right. Like I'll have an idea of something that I'd like to capture and I don't know how to get there and I don't know how to explain it necessarily. Oh, yeah. And then uh, conversely, sometimes the the crew will want to light something in a certain way and I want to get to the performance and I'll just be like, I don't care how you light it. <laughs> I just yeah. want to start shooting. Okay, I um, And that sometimes that's good. You can get mm -hmm. things rolling along. Sometimes, sometimes you not. need to let them, yeah, you need to let them do their job. So I've worked with, for instance, Boone and Mike a lot and they can go, Matt, go take five. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> We're going to load Well, it's good that they can do that. I you, appreciate you know, it. You absolutely. need to go. We Ab need to light this right. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good thing. Yeah. So what is your favorite part of filmmaking? I think that collaboration, that yeah, thing. Yeah, working you know, with everyone else. Yeah, I think, you know, to me, I, I've written a lot, but I don't necessarily, it's what hard. What about editing it, though, at the end and seeing your work come to life? Well, so editing is where, to me, um, a lot of the magic can happen. Right. Sometimes it's a grind to get to that. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. Actually, know? it's a grind to finish it, too. Yes. Editing yeah. can be pretty daunting. It can be very daunting. When you hit those moments, though, where you're like, you get, oh, ah, yeah. yes. Like, and I think, awesome. you know, I'm very, I'm really excited when you about when, Then when you see it and somebody else did the sound design and added sound in, and you're like, oh, man. Yeah, nice. Yeah. You get, you get a little... Charged Abs each time. Absolutely. So I'm really looking forward to finishing Joan and kind of seeing that all come together. And um, the, the the edit's done, so it's basically just, you know, they're working on the score and the sound design now. Okay. So what's your least favorite thing, then, about making films? Well, I think every filmmaker, ha you know, it, the scrounging for money <laughs> or, you know, or like, you know, just trying to put the thing together can be tough Getting everybody the logistics at the same place and, at the you know same and you want to yeah the logistics of it if you've got a little bit of money figuring out how to you know how to spend it and how to do that right you know right. sometimes all the logistics of it can be right so what daunting. is your favorite screenplay actually a favorite scre screenplay yeah a screenplay well I, so i think um i think the screenplay it, despite how it all came together i think the screenplay to casablanca is like every line in that script telegraphs something that's going to happen, tells something that has already happened, and, and tells character. I think right. it's So it foreshadows perfect. or fulfills a for something that was I foreshadowed think that, earlier. I think that script is perfect. Is that right? Yep. Who's your favorite A-list Hollywood director? Um, well, uh, I love the Coen brothers. Okay. I think probably that's what comes to mind, I think, first. I, I think they're brilliant. Does, do they, does that genre... Um, does it like, well, affect I like, you at all with like not with Joan, that's for sure, but like with uh, frightening nature or well, I think bee that, or something? I think that the um, the Cone Brothers do such a great job of um, they have very interesting characters. Mm -hmm. They've actually made a lot of different kinds of films, in my opinion. But the, there's they all have dark humor in them. Mm -hmm. They've all got you know they're all really cleverly shot. I love. I can't say that it's all one genre that they shoot, but I love. It doesn't seem like it. Though. Yeah. No. Yeah, I love I love the stuff that they shoot though. Mm -hmm. so. so, what's your favorite film? Uh, favorite film ever? Mm -hmm. well, one of them is definitely Apocalypse Now. Okay. I think that that's a re that I don't I never tire of watching that movie. I think the sound design, the score, the acting, everything is. You shot like great. a million feet of film for that too. They, they were there for months. Oh yeah, that was a <laughs> that was quite a shoot. But I think it's a brilliant movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you? What kind of uh, inspiration do you draw from from that film or from other films? Well, um, I think from that film, I think you know, I, I find it inspiring the fact that he didn't give up. Yeah. You know, exactly. I mean, typhoons that blew down it. his sets. Yeah. He had to mortgage his home. He, you know, the studio cut off money. He never stopped. Marlon Brando wouldn't read the script. Marlon Brando, you know. Mm -hmm. he, he, but nothing stopped him. He right. just kept going. I, that's inspiring. So is there a common type of film genre that you're drawn to more than others? I don't know if there's a genre necessarily. I really, I like things that are sort of on the noir end of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I, I like dark movies, gen generally speaking. Mm -hmm. um, but anything that's well, I can like anything that's well done, really. Yeah. I think. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know. Tell us, what A-list actor and then again actress would you like to direct or work with someday uh, on a film project? Um, you know, y you asked me that question earlier um, when we were just chatting, and I don't know, I'd never thought about it okay. before. <laughs> oh, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know. Okay. Like, I love, 
Like I think George Clooney's a great actor. He's been in a bunch of great stuff. I really like his. It'd be great to work with him. But I never, I've never written a script and thought, gee, if only I you could can get, get that actor. Yeah, actress, I don't. Yeah. I have never thought about that really. Well, it's good because then you don't write to a specific person. I don't think I, I don't think I've ever done that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Uh, what do you consider the elements of a good film? And then again, what's a, uh, a great film? Um, well, I, I can sometimes enjoy a film just because of the way it feels. Okay. You know, it doesn't, I don't always have to, like things can sometimes not even add up in a film and I'll still really enjoy it because of the emotional okay. impact of mm -hmm. it. So um, I sometimes enjoy um, just the mood and tone of films mm -hmm. as opposed to like the, the plot devices. All right. Where you do know? you hope to see yourself in five years? Um, well, I hope I'm, I hope I'm making some I hope I get, you know, Lower Boom uh, is is <laughs> helping other filmmakers make films. That's true. You right. know, I mean, that's... And so what's the app thing that it's... it's, it's well, it's going to be... So I um, would encourage everybody to go to LowerBoom.com and you can sign up to be a beta tester for the app. Um, we're still developing it. But it, essentially, what I'm trying to do is put together a little ecosystem that filmmakers can get their films discovered. Nice. Yeah, so I mean, part of part of Lower Boom's charter is not just so I can make movies, it's about sure. helping independent filmmakers make mm -hmm. films from all over. Since you've started from scratch making films, yeah. what advice do you have for other people getting ready to make films or wanting or interested in making films? What do you what would you give them as advice? Well, I think the the best advice that you can give anybody in filmmaking is just go make a film. You know, yeah. it's so. I mean, you could like I you can go to Northwest Film Center. You can rent a camera for forty dollars, and you can make a movie that weekend. You know, uh, the Mark Duplass gave a great keynote at South by Southwest, and basically, you know, he's he's got two shows on Netflix now. He's got he's making a lot of movies, and his whole thing was, I just we just got a camera, we went out, we started shooting, and we did that every weekend. You know, that was just what he did. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. You just got to go start doing it. Mm -hmm. So, what's next for you? Um, well, shooting another film next <laughs> next month. We're going to have the the premiere of Joan in November, and then I've got two features that are um, in. Is it going to premiere right somewhere in Portland? Yeah, we're going to show it. Um, I think we're going to show it um, in the courtyard of the Portland Art Museum in November, and All we're right. going to have a live string quartet playing the score, and going to show it there in the balcony. Oh, that would be uh, awesome! I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah, okay. Yep. Uh, right now, we're finishing up Portland Film Beat. We don't have much time left. I want to thank my executive producer, Carol Poland, our director, Ellery Nelson. I want to thank Christo, Krista, and Joni Jorgensen, Jonathan down here at TVC TV for all the help that they give me. I also want to thank Emily and Kate down at PCM TV for all their help. And until next time, I'm Portland Film Beat. Shoot for the silver screen. <laughs>